there's nothing quite so interesting in the field of archaeology as the things that archaeologists have been up to recently. They've been waist deep in pits, diving into lakes, and rummaging around in ancient trash in the hope of finding things that might tell us more about the past. And they've been successful. Let's check out some of their latest and greatest finds. On the English Channel Island of Alderney, an exciting May 2023 archaeological excavation has revealed a treasure trove of Roman artifacts and remnants. A project called Dig Alderney, working diligently on Longus Common, has unearthed a remarkable amount of Roman pottery amid the layers of an Iron Age cemetery and a subsequent Roman settlement. The dedicated team, led by Dr. Jason Monaghan, has already discovered around 1,000 pieces of Roman pottery, painting a vivid picture of the past. Although no Roman buildings have been found yet, the sheer abundance of Roman material is a testament to the rich history beneath the surface. The Lieutenant Governor of the Bailiwick of Guernsey, Lieutenant General Richard Cripwell, has joined the efforts, marveling at the variety and significance of the pottery finds. This ongoing dig in Alderney not only sheds light on the Roman era, but also offers insights into the Iron Age, with intriguing artifacts emerging from the layers of time. Excitement mounts as the excavation continues, unveiling the mysteries and stories of this ancient land. It doesn't make sense for there to be so much Roman material if there isn't a settlement, so let's hope they find it. Archaeologists conducting excavations at the world-famous site of Pompeii have made a remarkable discovery that adds a new layer of understanding to the city's tragic fate. Uncovered at the Castiamonti excavation site, an area known for its less affluent residences, were two skeletons believed to be victims of the catastrophic volcanic eruption and the simultaneous earthquake that befell Pompeii. This find provides poignant insights into the dangers faced by the ancient city's inhabitants during that fateful event. The remains, found intertwined with the remnants of a collapsed wall, reveal fractures that bear witness to the intense force of the collapse. According to Gabriel Zutrigel, director of the Pompeii Archaeological Park, the two men were likely engaged in construction projects involving plaster and water-filled amphorae when the disaster struck. This discovery highlights the destructive power of the earthquakes that accompanied the volcanic eruption, shedding new light on the harrowing circumstances faced by the people of Pompeii. As each new finding emerges, the archaeologists move closer to unraveling the profound human tragedy that unfolded when Mount Vesuvius unleashed its wrath upon the ancient city, transforming Pompeii into an immense archaeological laboratory of global significance. New research has challenged the notion that the human habit of kissing on the lips originated in a specific location in South Asia 3,500 years ago. Dr. Trolls Punk Arbal and Dr. Sophie Lund Rasmussen present evidence from written sources in the Middle East, suggesting that kissing was already well established 4,500 years ago in ancient Mesopotamia, which encompassed present day Iraq and Syria. Their findings push back the earliest documentation of kissing by 1,000 years compared to previous understanding. The cuneiform clay tablets from Mesopotamia reveal that kissing was considered an intimate gesture in romantic relationships, friendships, and family bonds, indicating that it was practiced in multiple ancient cultures across millennia. The researchers also highlight the prevalence of kissing among bonobos and chimpanzees, our closest living relatives. While kissing has been associated with the potential transmission of diseases, such as the herpes simplex virus 1, the researchers caution against attributing the sudden spread of pathogens solely to kissing. Ancient medical texts from Mesopotamia mention a disease resembling herpes symptoms, indicating the presence of similar conditions in ancient times. Basically, kissing appears to have been a fun but sometimes risky activity for the entirety of human history. A 1,500-year-old underground passage has been discovered during excavations in Istanbul's Sarakane neighborhood. The passage was found near Hasim Ishkan Passage. We appreciate the irony of the name, 
but there's no known connection between Hasim Iskan Passage and the older one that's just been discovered. It features carved marble blocks, reliefs, mosaics, and stone inlays. The structure has withstood the test of time and numerous earthquakes, making it an excellent example of Istanbul's architectural resilience. Mahir Palat, Deputy Secretary General of the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality, highlights the passage's significance and suggests that the city should learn from its ability to withstand earthquakes. While the main structure of St. Polyoktas Church was destroyed by a quake many centuries ago, its infrastructure remains intact, preserving the city's earthquake history. The excavation also yielded other valuable finds, including bronze coins, stamped bricks, marble pieces, ceramics, oil lamps, glass, and metal artifacts. The analysis of mortar and surface samples will provide further insights into the technology and composition of the ancient structure. This discovery offers a glimpse into Istanbul's rich archaeological heritage and its capacity to preserve historical treasures. In May 2023, archaeologists in Israel confirmed that they'd uncovered a 2,000-year-old financial record on the pilgrimage road in the city of David, Jerusalem, shedding light on the commercial activities of the Second Temple period. The Israel Antiquities Authority revealed that the small stone tablet likely served as a receipt or payment instruction, providing valuable insight into the daily lives of the city's inhabitants. The inscription features partially preserved lines with Hebrew names, letters, and numbers. One line ends with the name Shimon, followed by the Hebrew letter Mem, while other lines include symbols representing numbers, some accompanied by the letters Mem or Resh, abbreviations for money and quarters, respectively. Similar inscriptions have been found in Jerusalem and Bet Semesh, but this is the first one discovered within the boundaries of ancient Jerusalem during that period. The tablet was carved onto a chalkstone slab, which was likely originally used as an ossuary, suggesting the possibility of local trading or craftsmanship. The pilgrimage road, as its name suggests, served as a crucial route for both pilgrims and commercial activities, emphasizing the importance of this discovery in understanding the historical narrative of Jerusalem. A massive petroglyph carving has been uncovered in the Swedish province of Bohuslan by archaeologists from, appropriately enough, the foundation for documentation of Bohuslan's rock carvings. The petroglyph, a form of rock art created by removing part of a rock surface, was discovered beneath layers of moss on a rock slab in a farm pasture. Upon removing the moss, a 50-foot-long carving was revealed, featuring 40 figures depicting ships, horses, people, and chariots. The detailed carvings, including a 6-foot-long ship and a human over 3 feet in height, are deep and well-crafted. Dating back to the 7th and 8th centuries BCE, during the Nordic Bronze Age, the petroglyph provides valuable insight into the cultural and artistic practices of the time. The location of the carving on an almost vertical outcrop is considered unusual, and the researchers believe that the figures were carved by artisans while stationary on a boat, suggesting a unique method of creation. It's to be assumed that the outcrop held some kind of significance to the people who created the artwork. The discovery adds to the high concentration of petroglyphs found throughout Bohuslan, showcasing various aspects of ancient life in the region. In Bulgaria, archaeologists have unearthed a remarkable 1,100-year-old breastplate in a fortress on the country's border with Greece, and they think it may contain the oldest Cyrillic writing ever discovered. The inscription, found on a lead plate worn as a protective talisman, mentions two individuals named Pavel and Dimitar. Lead archaeologist Ivyalo Kanev suggests that Dimitar was likely a member of the fortress garrison and possibly a relative of Pavel. The inscription is believed to date back to the reign of Tsar Simeon I, who ruled the Bulgarian Empire from 893 to 927. This finding pushes back the origins of the Cyrillic writing system, widely used in languages like Russian, to an earlier period than previously known. 
While further research and a detailed publication are needed for conclusive dating, the discovery has already generated significant interest among experts. Yavor Miltanov, a researcher from the Institute for Bulgarian Language, acknowledges the importance of the find but urges caution until more information about the inscription's context is available. A detailed description and publication of the inscription are planned for the future, so this might be a topic we return to in a future video. A Bronze Age burnt mound complex has been unearthed in Laxfield, Suffolk, England by archaeologists from Cotswold Archaeology. The excavation, which involved trial trenching, revealed the burnt mound complex, an enclosure system from the Bronze Age, remnants of three Iron Age roundhouses, and traces of medieval activity. Burnt mounds, enigmatic features from prehistoric times, consist of flattened mounds formed by discarded burnt stones. These stones were heated and served as pot boilers, heating water in nearby earth-cut troughs, possibly lined with timber. The purpose of burnt mounds remains speculative, with theories ranging from saunas for bathing to dyeing, leather treatment, fulling, or cooking. They are often found near water sources, but at Laxfield, a large pit or well was dug to the water table level. Radiocarbon dating of preserved organic plant material in the waterlogged soils of the well helped establish that the burnt mound ceased activity before the Middle Bronze Age. The enclosure system, used for livestock farming, dates to the Middle Bronze Age, and the Iron Age saw the construction of three roundhouses, along with evidence of domestic waste. This is quite literally how the people of England used to live. There's something a little unusual about this collection of standing stones in St. Leonard, Switzerland. The stones, known as meniers, are arranged in a straight line. This is highly irregular for stone monuments of the Neolithic era. When people made stone monuments back then, and by then we mean about 4,500 years ago, they almost always arranged the stones in circular formations or in rows. These meniers are standing in a straight line, almost as if they're queuing for something. The straight line of standing stones was discovered in August 2021, but archaeologists, unfortunately, won't get long to study them in their original location. The ground was only excavated because of a construction project that's scheduled for the area, and the construction project is still going ahead. The stones will have to be extracted and moved if experts want to study them further, and the act of moving them might rob us of any chance of finding out why they were lined up like this in the first place. It's been a little while since this discovery, but experts don't understand it much better than they did on the day it was made. The Nazca Lines in Peru have been attracting attention from archaeologists and scientists for many years now. The gigantic geoglyphs have been etched into the ground for miles, but can only be seen and appreciated in full from a position of great elevation. The people who lived in the area of Peru over 2,000 years ago wouldn't have had access to any technology that would have allowed them to get into the air. So why would they draw lines that nobody could really see? How could they even coordinate themselves well enough to draw their designs without anyone coordinating them from above? We may never know the answers to those questions, but we do know that we keep finding more of them. A Japanese team from Yamagata University have just located more than 150 previously unseen figures, which they've dated to approximately 1,900 to 1,800 years ago. Some of the new designs look like animals and birds that live on Earth, but there are also some monstrous pictures and alien-like creatures too. In fact, one of them is even said to look like Homer Simpson. For the past 24 months, archaeologists have been recovering old cannons from the Savannah River in Georgia, USA. They've been turning up at a rate of more than one every month. So, as of the end of May 2023, there are 19 of them. Scientists have tested the cannons and believe them to be around 240 years old. Rather than being American weapons, it's almost certain that they came from British ships that were scuttled during the Revolutionary War. The first of the cannons was found by accident. There's an ongoing plan to deepen the river's shipping channel, and a dredge being used to do precisely that emerged from the river in early 2021. 
clasping a cannon in its jaws. That prompted archaeologists to get in the water and perform a more thorough check, and so the chain of discoveries began. At first, it was thought that the cannons would turn out to be relics from a Confederate gunship, the wreckage of which was found in the river several years ago. But that isn't the case. Military historians confirmed that the cannons aren't of American design, and so that means that, almost by default, they have to be relics of the Siege of Savannah in 1779. There are a great many ancient murals and monuments in Peru, but the problem is that looters are as aware of that as archaeologists are. It was feared that a unique pre-Hispanic mural in Lambayeque was destroyed by looters more than a century ago, but it hadn't been destroyed. It's just that the people who originally found it did a bad job of recording its location. In November 2022, the long-lost mural was rediscovered, still clearly visible on the wall of the temple it was painted onto a thousand years ago. This area is thick with foliage, so exploration is difficult. It's easy to see how those who do explore it can become uncertain of their location, or the location of the things they find. The temple is called Huaca Pintada, and was first photographed by Heinrich Brüning in the early 20th century. Looters did extensive damage to ancient monuments in the area during 1916, and it was feared Huaca Pintada was one of them because it couldn't be found afterwards. As it turns out, it was hidden away on private property, carefully protected by owners who don't make a habit of allowing visitors to enter. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.